Hey everyone, back again with you. Got another video today. Uh, last week I was at a local gun store and I found a French Berthier Carbine Model 1892. I uh, was really happy to find it. It was a really neat, interesting gun and it's over 117 years old. And for the price I got it for, I jumped on it right away. Uh, the carbine did not come with a bayonet or the cleaning rod that it would normally come with. Uh, being that the gun was so rare, I didn't have much hopes of finding one, especially in the price range of what I would be willing to spend for it. Uh, so I'd kind of given up hopes uh, this week on ever trying to find one, especially after searching and doing some online research for it. Um, so my wife and I, we were on vacation this week, and uh, we had gone to a another gun show that we uh, it found was going on, um, making the rounds at the local gun show, and um, unbelievably came across a... Uh, French model 1892 bayonet that uh, is for the Manlicher Berthier carbine, which is the carbine I purchased. I uh, couldn't believe it. Um, it's very extremely unusual to find such a rare piece, uh, especially within a week of buying the carbine rifle uh, more more than 200 miles away. Um, so very cool. I, I, the price that he gave it for me, I jumped on it right away. They run from about $150 to $200 online. Uh, he had it marked for $75, offered him $50, he accepted $60. So uh, for the price I got it for, I'm really happy. It uh, fits the gun perfectly. Um, the uh, color of the grip is a little bit different than the stock of the wood of the gun, but that's not a huge deal at all. So, uh, you know, just real quickly, I'll kind of show it to you here. Uh, so this is the bayonet itself. As I mentioned, it's a uh, French model 1892. It is a second pattern. Uh, there are three types of uh, variations to this that I'll get into a little bit, but first I'll just kind of show you what it looks like here. That is a uh, sword knife style type uh, bayonet. As you can see, it's a pretty lengthy um, blade. I think it's about 15 and a half inches. So it does have blood fullers all the way on this side, all the way to the tip, all the way to this side of the tip. And then also on the third blade, it starts here, there's a blood fuller uh, that runs from here to the tip. So pretty sweet, pretty uh, badass. Uh, it does have the wood grips. The type 2 variation of the second pattern is when they started using uh, wood grips, either replacing the ones that uh, came in for repair or uh, just manufacturing them from that date forward with the wood grips. Uh, I believe the Type 2 variation also changed the length of the uh, uh, the bolt or the, the holder there that attaches to the barrel, I should say. Um, the Type 3 variation, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, is just essentially the quillion here on the Type 1 and Type 2 variations went all the way around. On the Type 3, they, they shortened this uh, to that, and it was mainly used for the cavalry um, that needed that shortened quillion on there. Um, Everything looks pretty original with this particular piece. Um, there is a serial number on there, 623. Uh, I don't believe it matches with the um, scabbard. I'm not really sure as the scabbard doesn't have any markings or identifiers on there. There is also a uh, J in a circle and a C in a circle proof marks on the blade itself. Not sure if you're going to be able to see that or not. Um, was able to do some research and find out what that is. And then I'll get into that in a little bit here. Uh, with the details. Uh, there is some breakage on the wood grip there but nothing too major. Everything else is pretty much intact as you can see uh, the spring-loaded bayonet release works. Um, the blade is in decent shape. There isn't a lot of pitting or stain uh, staining to it. Uh, not a lot of rust corrosion. Uh, so overall very nice uh, piece especially for uh, the age. Uh, just a quick brief history. You can actually look this uh, information up online. This is what I pulled off a website. It's uh, just a brief description of this one. It's a. Uh, it says it's a long knife or sword bayonet manufacturing beginning in 1892 and used to about 1913. Uh, they are manufactured by various French arsenals to fit the model 1892 Manlicher Berthier short rifle, which is what I have. It replaced the French model 1886 Labelle bayonet. Uh, it says they are well made and can be easily identified by a third uh, fullered groove, which is that one I pointed out on the top of the um, bayonet, in the forward rib or back edge, opposite the cutting edge of the blade. Occasionally French script is on the back edge of, as well, uh, which I do not have any that I can see here. Um, 
single edge quality blade, uh, black composition or wood grips, um, all metal blued scabbard which I have here. Uh, there were two patterns of this model being originally, the difference being the length of the muzzle ring. The first pattern has the rear of the muzzle ring flush with the grips. Uh, the second pattern has a muzzle ring that extends backwards over the grips uh, about an eighth of an inch. Um, Arsenal modified versions are known, including the French model 1892 first pattern, modified Manlicher Berthier Benet with a hooked quillion removed. So, kind of what we think we got here. After doing some further research, uh, just more into the, the particulars of it, uh, again, it's either a Type 2 or Type 3 variation. It's, it's kind of hard to tell uh, just because that uh, there, no one's really sure. First, the years that those, those exactly took effect, those variations. And second, because they weren't sure if um, this particular sword maybe was an older version that they modified into the newer variation uh, or if it was just the newer variation from that day forward. So it's kind of really hard to tell. Uh, it was made during the Great War, uh, the Great War being between 1914 and 1918. That's kind of what it was intended purpose was for. Um, the J that I found on the proof markings here on the blade uh, is actually the supervising officer um, at the manufacturer Chatelier O, which is uh, kind of neat because that's actually the same manufacturer as the carbine that I found. Uh, Chatelier O, and if I'm pronouncing that correctly, hopefully I am. Um, is one of the three manufacturers that produce these carbines and bayonets. Uh, so kind of a neat neat example of uh, where the bayonet actually came from the same manufacturer as the carbine which is kind of cool. Uh, but at that manufacturer the supervising officer, the J stands for uh, and again hopefully I'm getting the pronunciation right on this, Mark, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Mark Jacot um, who worked there from uh, about April of 2014 to uh, May of uh, two, uh, 1924. Uh, I should say from April of 1914 to May of 1924. Uh, the Type 2 variation started in 1915 or 1917 depending on the sources that you're using um, and essentially again that was that composite grips were discontinued either replaced or started using the woods at that point, uh, wood grips. Uh, the Type 3, which start in, uh, started around 1915 and 1918, again depending on the sources, uh, is where they, they shorten that quillion for the uh, Calvary use. Uh, this most likely, in my opinion, would probably be the Type 3 variation, uh, since it, ha it does have wood grips and the shortened quillion, uh, with, the, with the thought of that perhaps they didn't modify an older version of this, this bayonet to the current version. Um, the C that's stamped on there next to the J is actually the final inspector, is the, what they call the, um, or the principal arms called the Contrador General Principal, if I'm pronouncing it right again, not, my, not really caught up on French. Uh, but that could be one of two people, either Lieutenant Colonel Sharpie, who worked there from 1915 to 1918, or Colonel Chatain, 1912 to 1915, who again worked at that Chatelero uh, manufacturer. So kind of an interesting... Uh, Interesting piece, has a lot of history with it. Uh, anything from the World War One is definitely collectible. Um, you know, the, the value on this again was between $150, $200. So, um, the very cool piece. Um, definitely glad I have it in my collection. I'm glad I have the carbine to go along with it. Uh, hopefully, this helps some of you guys in identifying maybe a, a bayonet that you have. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. But most of the information I found is mainly just from forums doing Google searches with. Uh, uh, the information that was provided to me on the bayonet already. So, hope this helped guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed and take her easy. Thank you.